I still say this to this day, it's the most profound experience of my life. It was the most anxiety, the most fear I have ever felt out of 14 years being in combat zones. And so, so what was the, because I would imagine being in combat zones, you're scared of dying. Mm -hmm. And so what was more frightening than that? I was dying. The Office of Veterans Affairs estimates 17 veterans die by suicide on a daily basis in the U.S. Outside researchers, though, say that number excludes overdose deaths, and they suggest the number could be closer to 44 a day. So we want to treat massive amounts of trauma where there's virtually no money. If we are profit maximizing, we wouldn't do anything. Yeah. But if we're about net zero trauma by 2070, that means we have to have a global focus and we go where the trauma is, not where the money is. Psychedelics have been used for medicinal purposes for millennia. But in the mid 20th century, scientific exploration exploded. The growing trend among the veteran community to travel overseas to take part in psychedelic assisted therapies. And the reason why is that those therapies have shown a lot of promise in treating PTSD. Another reason why they need to go overseas is that the drugs here are illegal. Psychedelics by themselves, we tend to put too much power in the thing. Again, it's the therapy. So let's just say psychedelic assisted therapy. In psychedelic assisted therapy, to give you a sense of um, what our method is for treating PTSD, it's 42 hours of therapy and it's with two therapists, usually a male, female, but not always. We got a coach and a therapist. We could talk to the coach whenever we wanted. We had uh, therapy, I think two, I think we had two sessions, if I remember correctly, before we went down to Trevor's place. And you have three days of, of preparatory. So we have three of these 90 minute sessions before the first MDMA, and then three of them after each MDMA for integration. Alcohol was killing him. It got an early start. Probably around 12 was my first drink. Soon, getting drunk was not enough. AA didn't work, nor did any other rehab. Doctors told Costas he was drinking himself to death. All of the stuff that I had mentioned, no drinking, um, I lost 11 pounds, my eye color got lighter. There's estimated 13 million PTSD patients in America, and there's even more that people have depression. There's loads of people that are addicted to, uh, dependent on alcohol or other drugs. Costas, one of the first patients, says he has not had a drink in nearly seven years. For the first time that I can remember, I was able to sit with myself in complete peace wow. and, and not feel anxiety and not feel like I should be doing something. And, and, and it felt amazing. So, uh, so I'm curious, when, when it was happening, was your emotional tone kind of the same? It was like experiencing hundreds, maybe a thousand memories wow. Wow. all at once. Uh, I have a kind of a bigger question, uh, you know, so that in the psychedelic 60s, right, psychedelics got kind of connected to um, the hippies and the anti-war movement, the anti-Vietnam War movement. You've talked about how you've been in, in, in war, and, and so, so I'm wondering, has these psychedelic experiences, how have they impacted your sense about uh, war and, and, and violence and you know, what we're trying to accomplish, or if, if at all? It made me rethink everything. I think a lot of it is, is meaningless, senseless stuff that we don't need to be involved in. Let's talk about the mental health crisis here in America. Just yesterday, right down the street in Green Hills, Nashville, uh, there, was a, there was an active shooter, killed six people, three children, three adults. A month before the shooting in Hale's journal, she wrote, quote, kill those kids, then uses a racial slur describing white students at, quote, private fancy schools. 
A lot of people are thinking psychedelics is the answer to this. My question yeah. is how do how would that how would we even begin to implement that? Important strategy that we have at MAPS, which is there's a twofold parallel strategy. One is to medicalize psychedelics for PTSD, for depression, for anxiety, for substance abuse, for other things. But the other is to change drug policy and to make these legally available to people on their own. Uh, somewhat of a libertarian approach to this idea that the government shouldn't be um, intruding in, in our own consciousness and how we adjust our consciousness. The last visual I saw was, it was like a 1980s video game character <laughs> walked out into the front of my head and just waved goodbye and then walked <laughs> right back out where I came from and I was like, Inter interesting. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.